you might remember this. You might remember this. I guess I can tell you why my avatar has changed. Okay, well, I bought this face, the limited you face, because I have to get braces soon. Cry. Yeah. Soon referred to today. Um, yeah, I have braces now. <laughs> and I guess there's nothing left to do but put on the costume that I had on before. That video was two and a half years ago. And today, well, Thursday, this is the day I'm recording this, I got my braces off. Let's go. So, I guess there's nothing left to do but take this face off. Failed to load assets list? Are you kidding me? Don't just not work, please. Okay, well, I can take it off. Can't put the face I want to put on. Hold on. Oh, there. Okay, I just got the actual face. This one from the recent list. It's called Wink Blink. The one I actually wanted was this one, but I'm a couple hundred thousand Robux too short. Anyway, today we're building floors 7 through 8 of Tower of Music Theory Mayhem. Also, yeah, you might notice the avatar change, because it's after the start of spring now. So I made a new shirt, and this is what it looks like. It says Rare Studios, and it has a gradient. Also some text effects. That looks cool. This is not part of the shirt. That's a different item. And I'm just using the pants I made for the winter outfit. Honestly, it, it can go with any, I guess. It's like a blue gradient pants, and I don't know. Those are on sale in my Roblox group if you want to buy them. So I've built a little bit of floor 7. Um, the key signature is B major or G sharp minor, which has those sharps. The order I'm going to be building things here actually isn't the, ti isn't the order it's in the title. I just thought that order sounded better. The one we're starting with is going to be articulations. We're going to reference back to a comment I had talked about in the second video of this series, I think. So this comment says, falling platforms for staccato maybe, legato for obstacles all connected together. So those are different types of articulations. We're also gonna go back and reference the notes I wrote for my plan for this floor. To accent a note, I think you'll make it so you gotta click a, a button in addition to pressing jump slash space. Well, this sign is conveniently already placed here. We'll do staccato first because I guess that's easier. A dot represents a staccato platform. Notes marked like this should be played light and separated. These platforms are falling platforms, and it's going to lead to over here. Have I done any falling platforms yet? Does it say here? No, it doesn't. Okay. I guess it's fine if we have, but from here on out, they're going to be marked with a dot. So they're going to look just like normal platforms, but we're going to take um, text and put it on top. It's just a period. Okay, but it's not centered. Maybe I can get, like, the multiplication dot thing. There we go. And these text settings work fine, I guess. That takes us to our next accent, or articulation, I mean, which is an accent. Perhaps you remember seeing the symbol as decoration on floor two. It was that, this little arrow thing. It's called an accent, I'll write it right there. Well, this means to emphasize the note, it's above or below. Here, make sure you click the actual note at the same time you jump to play that note. So we got another one of these things. It's, this one's gonna be in three, four time, because I don't know why not. All right, here is our rhythm. So now let me just go copy paste the accent sign from down here. Here it is. And that's what was in that screenshot, by the way. Okay, so there's our accent. It's gonna be on the first one. We'll also put it on the first one of the second measure. All right, here is how I made this accent thing work. So you first hit a button right before you start the section that will deactivate the platform. And then there's a button deactivator with a click button deactivator on the note, which will deactivate the button, thus reactivating the platform. It has to be a button deactivator like that because it needs to still be invisible. Then I basically just repeated that. Okay, I've reached part limit about, I'm a hundred parts away, I know, we'll sort that out. Legato lines look just like ties, so they would look like this between two notes. Or it can be multiple notes, actually. Okay, I've built the rest of this floor. So, the following platforms are marked as legato. This means they are connected by an invisible platform. The legato line itself is can't collide false. So, pretty easy. You can kind of just walk. That's it. So, after that, you're going to hit this button. Uh, yeah, let's just skip over here. There's another one of these, by the way. With an insta-kill, you gotta jump over. This teleporter will send you to a tower crossing to floor 3 of Tower of Among Us. So, I already moved it over here, like, using pre-mades, and it is, like, 200 parts. So, we're gonna have to, like, remove and change a lot of things over here. It's gonna have Rising Lava too. I guess I can start right here. That's a good spot, except that it's, like, half a stud higher than it should be, because there's that music part. Okay, so we can go ahead and move the lava up to here, like, right where it's starting. Um... That means everything underneath it, I can go ahead and delete. What I can do is delete all of these trusses except one, and then make that one just go long ways like this. Okay, so the idea of this actual floor is that there, all these gray platforms are timing related because the song is the Among Us March, so like, you gotta stay in time. I thought this would be a good one to do the tower crossing to for 
Tower of Music Theory Mayhem. Because this is the best one that, like, the gameplay directly relates to something music-related, I guess. Alright, so I don't need to make the things here be button-activated because this isn't the actual tower. I moved it over here using pre-mades. Oh, and the end of it is going to be like it is in the actual tower, where it's a conveyor launch, but I put a teleporter up here, which will send you back to the tower. So let's decide everything to delete. It should be a lot of things because, whoopsie, good thing there's an undo button now. I gotta save parts here. Like, I need, the, I need to get down to like 300, which isn't happening because there's only like 200 parts on this floor. By 300, I mean 300 parts more to use. Like, we gotta build three more floors. I do want one Amogus to remain here, so this one is going. This whole platform is going, because it looks- because there's a lot of parts used here. Hit the wrong button again. These are can collide false in the actual tower, but I'm gonna make them can collide true here. Because remember, that platform is here. That shouldn't be there. So you would jump there, but here, it'll just be a long jump. And it's not exactly gonna be buffed or nerfed, since these two towers are about the same difficulty. It's just gonna be changed a little bit. Okay, the tower crossing's done now. So I deleted mostly everything. The last thing I could delete would probably be this, but like, it's not- that many parts and everything i've deleted so far is as much as i'm willing to do like because i still want it to be kind of recognizable the main things i deleted the platform here i also deleted the stuff that was under here that you like got to a button and i deleted the thingies over here that was previously how you got to a button they're like fading parts it's gonna end where you jump to that uh conveyor currently it sends you there we're about to change that on floor eight i wrote the math of music equal versus just slash pure temperament. We'll talk about frequencies and things. Also, there will be a thing where you gotta tune a chord to just or equal to progress. It's gonna look like this is the rest of the parts I'm gonna have to work with for the remainder of the tower. 153. Floor 9, I can make pretty short. And then after that was gonna be a tower crossing a tower of superception. Cause why not? Yeah, cause I don't have part limit. This is the part limit's not gonna like that so much. That's why not. But the good news is I can always come and delete some of the detailing on the first five floors. Well, more like first four floors, really, um, for part limit. Like, on these things, these take up a lot of parts, so probably if I deleted most of these, I could get, like, 50-plus parts from that. So I'll keep that in mind, but I won't delete them yet. Okay, so the first part of floor gate basically explains how sound waves work, and then a higher frequency wave creates a higher pitch. The next part explains equal versus just slash pure temperament. I say just slash pure because it's called either. Basically, an equal temperament, which is the most common, you take two notes an octave apart and equally divide the frequency differences into 12 pitches. In just slash pure temperament, however, you're in a specific key and the other notes' frequency are changed slightly, so that intervals and chords are the exact frequency ratio they should be. Here's a major triad represented by push boxes. However, only the third can be moved. That would be this one. Tune the third by moving the pushbox to the exact frequency of the note in equal temperament. You'll know you've gotten it when the moving platform activates. So in equal temperament, if you tune a chord to the exact frequencies, then this is actually going to be a little bit sharp, like relative to the rest of the chord. It's still going to technically be in tune, but the chord itself isn't actually going to be. It's still going to sound like almost exactly the same, so like no one's really going to notice it. But So I've placed a pressure plate. So, like, if this is the root and this is the fifth, and the third is gonna be not in the exact center. Okay, hold on. It would be a major third and then a minor third, which we're just gonna say it would go right there, a little bit to the right. But it's gonna be a little bit more to the right because it's equal temperament. Okay, if I do that with pressure plates that I want can't collide false, you're gonna have to get it so it's on both of them. That's the goal here before it activates. We'll make we'll make two separate moving platforms. So it says tune here with a text box. So one pressure plate, and it needs to be push block activated, activates that one, and the other one activates that one. So like, let's say you're a little bit above, it, you're a little bit to the right, then it's only gonna do that one. If you're a little bit to the left, it's only gonna do that one. So you gotta get it precise enough um, for both of them to activate because it's on both pressure plates. As you can probably guess, on the opposite side of the floor, we had the exact same thing, but you tune it to just slash pure temperament instead of equal temperament. Also, I sure didn't expect to run into an issue of having too many text effects. There's apparently a limit of 300. I'll also need to sort that out in addition to part limit. It's time to showcase these two floors start to finish, at least I guess from the point where I started the video. A dot represents a staccato platform. Notes marked like this should be played, light, and separated. These platforms are falling platforms. Then for accents, I don't feel like reading all the signs. Nor do I feel like getting the metronome out. You click them. Then some of these jumps until you get to here with the, the following platforms are marked as legato. This means they're connected by an invisible platform. The legato line itself is can collect false. 
so I just walk across. This one is also sharp, if you look closely, it's F sharp, which that's the key. Well, no, the key is B, but that includes F sharp. Okay, I went the wrong way. I think it's possible to, like, go that way and then back this way. I think I've made there be enough time for that, but it's quicker just to do that. I'll still leave the timer as 20, though. Um, also, this is a conveyor that goes this direction towards this wall, unmarked, because, like, it, it, it only goes 20 speed, and it's, like, it's fine if you don't know it's there. Then we have the tower crossing to floor 3, Tower of Among Us. I didn't make the lava start rising. For now, it doesn't. <laughs> Warning, there are fading parts ahead until you reach the next set of purple platforms. I suggest looking down before you're jumping ahead. Well, I already know it, because I built it, but, like, you're supposed to jump um, onto the thingy. Then once it reappears, you can go back down until you get to here, from which you'll jump on these purple platforms, and then you're safe at that point, to just like, well, I mean, you shouldn't stop moving because there's rising lava, or there will be eventually. When you hear a tone slash note, you're hearing a sound wave. The frequency of a wave is how many waves pass in a second. The frequency of a tone is the frequency of its sound wave. For example, A above middle C has a frequency of 440 hertz, abbreviated like that. So this is a low frequency wave. You can see, like, if this was moving, I guess. Not a lot of times will it pass in a second. However, a high frequency wave, you can see it passes lots of times. Actually, A isn't always 440 hertz, but it usually is. It can either be directly tuned to a different frequency, or it can be the result of equal versus just slash pure temperament. Equal temperament is the most common. We basically take two notes an octave apart, and each chromatic note up is a twelfth of the differences in the octave's frequency. In just slash pure temperament, however, you're in a certain key, and tune the other notes so that intervals and chords are the exact frequency ratio they should be. Then you have a thingy, you do this, because it's marked with a legato line, so they're connected. Here's a major triad represented by push boxes. however, only the third can be moved. Tune the third by moving the push box to the exact frequency of the note in equal temperament. You'll know you've gotten it when the moving platforms both activate. Here's the reset button, by the way. So, uh, only one is activated, but now they're both activated. Um, now we need to get those two things activated. There we go. And that's the end at the moment. Thanks for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to leave a like and consider subscribing. There are two more videos of this series to come. One of building floor 10, and then one of the entire tower playthrough. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. I'll see you in the next video, and have a great day.